Hey, hey, Mr. Heritam here. We're going to do the bonding comparison review. So here we go. We're going to go over how to do these different types of bonds. Okay. Um, yes, metallic bonding is one of these types of bonds, but I will not be going over that one with you right now because it's the least important to me. Okay, so starting off with ionic bonds. Remember, ionic bonds have a metal and a non-metal. Okay. They may have polyatomic ions, like ammonium and sulfate that are on the reference packet that you need to know. Okay. These have cations and anions. Okay. In lattices that are in uh, ionic salts. Okay, then we get to my favorite one, polar covalent bond. Remember that this is non-metal and non-metal. Okay, remember here that these, the electrons, are shared unequally. Okay. That is polar, just so you know. Then nonpolar is nonmetal and nonmetal. This is when they are shared equally. Electrons are shared equally. Okay, that's nonpolar. Notice I don't get excited about nonpolar because it is the weakest. Okay, electronegativity differences. Remember, the electronegativities are listed in the uh, uh, reference packet. So if it's 1.7 or greater, it is 50% ionic bonding in there, or at least. If it's 0.3 to 1.7, that is polar covalent. And then nonpolar is going to be less than 0.3. Okay. Okay. These are usually in salts, which is another word for an ionic compound. All salts are ionic compounds. So if you refer to something as a salt, it's an ionic compound with a metal and nonmetal in it, most likely. These are referred to as molecules. Because when you use the term molecule, that is covalent bonding. Okay. Okay. How do we reach the eight electron to be stable octet rule? Okay. So in ionic bonds here, we give and take electrons to form ions. Remember, metals lose electrons. They're like, total up, these errors. And non-metals are winners of the electrons. They gain electrons. Okay. Remember in covalent bonding we share to get to eight valence electrons. In covalent bonding, remember there are exceptions. Remember, hydrogen likes two, Be likes four, and boron likes six. And remember, third period nonmetals in center can have more than eight valence electrons, okay? 
those are the expanded octets I'm talking about there for like phosphorus, sulfur, if it's in the center, or bromine, if it's in the center, they can expand the octets there. Okay, how do we show the Lewis dot structure here? Okay, here the charges balance out. And we use brackets, positive ion like that. Should try to get on the screen so you can see what I'm writing. And then negative ion like that, usually with eight dots like that. Okay. Um, here we show electrons being shared like fluorine like this because this has 14 valence electrons or remember you can also write it like this as well Okay, let's see what the last squares on the chart are. Okay, basic properties here. Basic properties of, this one was ionic, correct? Yes. So these have high melting points and high bowing points. They conduct electricity in aqueous or molten form uh, they're usually solids at room temperature they dissolve in water and remember they have the ion, ion, IMF. Okay, then we get to my favorite ones. You know my favorite ones. Polar covalent. I know, you guys are disappointed in screaming. I know. I know. These have low melting points and bowing points don't conduct electricity liquid at room temperature They dissolve in water because they are polar like water. And it's either the dipole dipole IMF or hydrogen bonding IMF. Then we get to nonpolar covalent. These have nonpolar. These have very low melting points and bowling points. Don't conduct electricity. Dissolve in oil because oil is nonpolar. They're often gases. And they have the London dispersion 
intermolecular force. Okay. There you go. You guys are champions. The legend is 